So the Utah Jazz made a major re-signing a couple weeks ago, re-signing Lowry Market into a four-year contract extension. And I guess the Utah Jazz are building around him, so let's do that today in my final NBA 2K24 rebuild. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Yeah, 2K24 is over. So my next video on the channel will be NBA 2K25, which I believe we can get that out on Wednesday, which is very exciting. So this Jazz team, also in an intriguing position, I think it kind of reminds me of the Hawks in the Eastern Conference, but the Jazz do have some of their their draft capital going forward so they can afford to be really bad this year but this team has still got a lot of like fun talent on the team but they're still probably one of the more bottom rosters in the western conference just given how strong the west really is like Lowry marketing is a great player in this league i think he could be a number two on a championship team i thought golden state should have went on trade for him or maybe san antonio in a deal i like colin sexton a lot and i think they can get a decent amount for him if they were to make him available at the deadline but he's still 25 years old he could fit into their long-term plans but i don't know if he's going to be worth more than 18 million a year that he could cost on the next contract you have john collins won't be easy to trade him because of the $26 million salary. Walker Kessler still has two more years off on his rookie deal and had a great rookie season. A little bit disappointing sophomore year. Keontae George is coming off an impressive rookie year. You still have Jordan Clarkson on a fairly reasonable contract. Taylor Hendricks I'm excited for in year two. You got Cody Williams and Isaiah Collier and Kyle Phil Pasquet, the rookies. Year two, Bryce Sensible. And a lot of draft picks on this team as well. It's a very exciting future for the Utah Jazz. But their pick is top 10 protected next year. I should have mentioned that. And with this being a very good draft class with Cooper Flagg, Ace Bailey, Nolan Troyor, uh, Dylan Harper, VJ Edgecombe, this would be the year that they should want to get a top four pick in the draft. Last year, they took Cody Williams at number 10, and I think that's a fine player. I don't think he's a franchise-changing player. And just figuring out the rotation is very tough. Like, I don't think Drew Eubanks is going to crack the rotation. Same with Kyle Filipowski, unfortunately, in his rookie season due to all these bigs on this team. Next year, though, when John Collins is off the team, he'll probably be in there. So I'm going to give Bryce Sensiboss some minutes. Him and Isaiah Collier are going to get 12 minutes tonight. We're going to go 15 to Cody Williams. There's a chance Jordan Clarkson or Colin Sexton is traded at the deadline. I think we're going to have John Collins will be the power forward. Walker Kessler will be the center. Even though Collins is better offensively at the five, in my opinion, we're going to go 23 minutes to Hendricks, 25 to Clarkson. Let's go 30 to Collins, 28 to Kessler, 35 to Larry Markkinen, and we'll do 30 to the backcourt of Keontae George and Colin Sexton. This team has a smart GM in Danny Ainge. They have a smart young coach in Will Hardy. This should be an exciting team for the future, but they definitely need to find the number one to Markkinen being the number two going forward. We rattled off two straight wins after losing opening night. Markkinen had a great game here against the Clippers. We ended up winning by 18. Then we bought the Phoenix Suns by 21 points. Markkinen was great. Collins was really good as well. So we're here at the trade deadline and we are terrible. We are currently 15 and 38. <laughs> Not good whatsoever, but honestly, we need to be bad to be good for some of these juggernauts on the Western Conference. And obviously, some of these teams are getting up there in age, but you still have a very young Shea and Thunder team, young Luka, young Wemby on the rise, young Zion, still a young Jokic, like he's 30 years old. So these teams aren't going anywhere. We need more firepower on this team. And I think we got to bottom out before we could try to compete against some of these teams. Uh, I'm definitely going to be very active at this deadline as a seller, which I think in the NBA, it's usually a seller's market. So I'm not moving Lowry Markin in. I'd like to win a championship with him. But Colin Sexton, I think, could net me a very nice return. We'll see if we're able to get good enough value, making 18 million a year. If not, I will move him in the move him in the offseason. John Collins, I would like to move him as well, but he's making $26 million. I do believe he has a player option. I think there could still be a market for him in the offseason. We'll see if he opts in. We'd have to take some bad money back. Jordan Clarkson now is definitely going to get traded at this year's deadline. I don't know if I'd move anybody else. Maybe Drew Eubanks. And I think that's it for this team. I was going to see if I could maybe get some picks or just something out of Karis Vert for Jordan Clarkson, but they're kind of the same player. So I think it'd be very shocking if they would agree to that. Yeah, they'd want something else involved. But to be honest with you, it's not been easy to find a trade return that I like for Clarkson and Eubanks. Both are under contract. So that may come in the off season. I mean, I could do this trade with the Milwaukee Bucks, then release Brooke Lopez. I think I can get something better for Sexton in the off season. He's been really good and he's still 20. But the Houston Rockets are willing to give me a first round pick, but I got to take on Dylan Brooks's contract and I don't really want to do that. This is an interesting trade from the Thunder because I can get Lou Dort and they may sacrifice some defense for some offense and some secondary shot creation next to Shea Gilgis Alexander if Caruso is not working out and I can get a future first. I said it would have to like blow me away to do a trade, not in the offseason for Sexton because I think Sexton has turned into a very good trade asset in this league. But I think the Thunder are giving me a nice draft pick, not for this year's draft. It will be for the 26th draft because we're off a year with the new rosters, but in 2K, it's still the 2024 season. And I get Lou Dort, who's making 16 mil a year, which is a little high, but he's an elite 3D complimentary piece. And I think we'd value that 
that a ton and they're willing to pay premier price for Colin Sexton. So we're going to do that. We're going to get Lou Dort here in uh, Utah. We're going to hopefully be bad for the rest of the season and land a top three pick in the draft. And I think I'm going to look to move Clarkson definitely in the offseason if I can, John Collins. And Luka Doncic wins his first MVP award. Reese Shea takes him rookie of the year. Nas Reed goes back to back in six man of the year awards. We did get Cody Williams on all rookie second team. He shot 48% from the field, 80% from the line in his rookie year. I do believe the three point shot will develop. And yeah, we definitely did not make the playoffs or the play in tournament. We finished the season with a 29 and 53 record. It's also unfortunate that Gigi Jackson broke his foot. Uh, the Grizzlies, I guess, had another disappointing year. I, I don't know how they were worse than us. How did they win 28 games with that roster? We finished with the fourth worst record in the NBA. Watch us fall to like six on draft night. Mark Hinton was our leading scorer, followed by Jordan Clarkson, John Collins, Keontae George, not a good year too, unfortunately. Lou Dort, who I'm excited to be in the plans with this team going forward. We're going to have to figure out what Hendricks is for this team because is he the starting four? Do I move Markkinen back to the power forward position? Definitely all our questions this offseason. And that's why I'd also like to move John Collins as well, because that can open up more minutes for Taylor Hendricks. That can open up more minutes for Walker Kessler as well, as we're trying to fully dive into this youth movement. As, hey, OKC in the NBA Finals after the Sexton trade, who knew, or who knows if they would have made it um, if they didn't do that and uh, they made, or maybe Wu Dort could have shot them out of games. I don't know. They ended up winning the Finals, so it worked out for them. They ended up beating the Knicks. As LeBron retires, so does Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry, Al Horford, and Brooke Lopez. So he would have retired at the end of the year. I'm glad we found that trade with the Oklahoma City Thunder, though. I'm not comparing Sexton to Halliburton, but you can kind of look at it the way that, like, the Kings were only moving Halliburton unless they got, like, a great offer on the table. The Pacers swooped in, offered DeMonte Sabonis better than any other team was offered, like, player-wise. So you can kind of look at it like that. We'll see how far we drop. <sighs> Hopefully we get lucky. I would love to add Cooper Flag to this team. All right, so let's see if we drop here. We could definitely drop to six. I do not want to see Utah's logo. All right, that means we are in the top five. This is good. Do we drop to five or are we in the top four? We in, we're in the top four. Let's freaking go, and I doubt we're four. I feel like no way we just stay at four. That would be insane. I don't even know if that's possible. We're in the top three. Utah could be back. Come on, give me one. I need one in this draft. I need one. Three is going to go to Houston. Okay, we have a chance here to get Cooper Flag. Let's see. Is it going to be us here at number two? Or are we going to number one? We're going to number one. Utah wins the draft lottery. Let's go. We win the 2025 lottery. Danny Ainge would probably be ecstatic here. And we have the opportunity to draft Cooper Flag to this team and build him around Will Hardy, Larry Markkinen, and this young core we have. I am thrilled with that. Let's freaking go. So now I gotta figure out, do I want Flag at the three, Markkinen at the four, or vice versa? All right, Dallas has some cap space right now. They gotta figure out what they're doing with Kyrie, but that can open up some trades for them. So I'm gonna send them Jordan Clarkson and Drew Eubanks. They get some big man depth, and they're able to take on Jordan Clarkson to be a scorer off the bench for their first round pick unprotected next season. Let's go into this draft. We cleared up a lot of minutes right there, and we're gonna take Cooper Flag with the number one overall pick. Forgot they did sign Slee Makayug and Johnny Jujang for three year deals, but I think they're partially guaranteed throughout them. We also have 30 and 31 as well. So I'm going to get Colin Murray Boyles, who fell to pick number 30, the big man, defensive minded big man out of South Carolina. And then we also have pick 31 as well. And I'm going to take Andre Stoyakovich, the son of Peja Stoyakovich, played at Stanford his rookie year, but then just transferred to Cal for this upcoming year in his sophomore season. So we're going to sign all three of these guys another year that we're getting three new rookies in Utah. I'm really going to see if I can work out a trade and get John Collins off this team. We'll give Jason Preston the qualifying offer just to fill up this roster. If I do attach a draft pick to get off of Collins, I will do that. I really want him off this team. So Collins was traded for a bunch of second round picks. I think two of them a couple years ago. We're going to probably do the same here. I'm sure I can get a first round pick out of this, but we basically just want the Nets to absorb the cap. And John Collins could probably average 21 and 10 again in Brooklyn as like the number two option. So this makes sense for both parties. And we're going to do that. We're going to get Collins off this team, be a little bit realistic there. We do have some cap space as well. Do I want to sign Trey Murphy? Let's see this rotation right now. Point guard, this is a big year for Keontae George, if he does not take strides to being or looking like a franchise point guard, we could pivot to Isaiah Collier. If not, it could be somebody off this team. Shooting guards, I don't know. I think I may move one of these guys to small forward. We'll see. But we have Markkinen and Cooper Flagg there. We have Filipowski and Kessler. I like the core that we have. So I don't really think I'm going to sign anybody out there. And Kyrie Irving re-signs with Dallas. So they were able to be smart with their cap space. Take Jordan Clarkson and Eubanks from us and then still bring back Kyrie. And I believe we should have some cap space next year as well. I know Markkinen's contract will go up a little bit, but I'm probably going to pick up the team option on Mood Dort. Um, but yeah, we should still have cap space next summer also. I guess we will have to figure out what we're going to be doing with Walker Kessler long term. So this is also a big year for him as Jason Preston accepts the qualifying offer. So here at player progression, Markkinen's an 
George 82, Kessler 82. I'm sure we will get our pick top 10 protected again. So hey, maybe we can get AJ DeBanta on this team also. All right, so this is what the 2026 season is gonna look like. Keontae George, Lou Dort, Cooper Flagg, Lowry Markkinen, and Walker Kessler with Taylor Hendricks, Cody Williams, Phil Powski, Collier, and Sensabaugh all coming off the bench. I'll probably send Colin Murray Boyles and Andre Sorokovic, or maybe just Boyles to the G League. You know, I'll actually send Andre Sorokovic there as well. First game of the season's on the road against the Cavs, and we are gonna start off the season with a dub. We beat Donovan Mitchell and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Cooper Flag drops 31 points in his NBA debut. That'd be unreal. <laughs> We're, we could definitely be into like a disappointment in him or watching him at Duke this year offensively. Like, I don't think he's going to be someone that's going to average 30 plus points a game in the NBA one day. Could he average mid 20s for sure? I think he's going to be more of a defensive minded prospect than an offensive minded, but he should be the most well balanced prospect overall going into the 2025 draft. I'm really excited to dive into that film this year and evaluate Cooper Flag as a prospect. Guys, he will be the most hyped up college prospect we have seen probably since Kate Cunningham, Powell Bancaro, Zion Williamson from couple drafts ago because in 2023 Brandon Miller had a lot of hype as the number one college guy when B was overseas and this past year the number one college guy was Reed Shepard so it's cool to have somebody going into the college year where all eyes are going to be on him and we are here at the 2026 trade deadline definitely performing better as a team we're a game above 500 could this be the first time since the 2022 season the Utah Jazz make the playoffs. It's been four years. We are a team with a 1.6 point differential, which is actually pretty good. That would be sixth, tied for sixth in the Western Conference. Markinen is averaging 19.5 points, 6.8 rebounds. Cooper Flagg, 17 points, 8 rebounds, 3.5 assists. Keontae George, more efficient this year and is averaging 7.5 assists tonight. So I think we could be locking him in as my franchise point guard. Taylor Hendricks has been a great offensive big man for us off the bench. Cody Williams' shot is falling a little bit more this year as well, but the free throws are down just a tad bit. 12 and 10 a night for Walker Kessler, looking like I want to re-sign him as well. And this team is getting deep. It is. I really like it. You got Collier off the bench. Hopefully him or Sensabaugh could really merge into something, but Sensabaugh is shooting all right this year. Could be better, could be worse. Filipowski, 38% from three. He will have some competition with Colin Murray Boyles next year. But I think I'm going to bypass, I think this will bypass the team option and we're going to re-sign Lou Dort to a three-year deal. Um, for OKC too, they got to worry about the apron stuff. So they got to pay Shea, Chet, J-Dub. That trade can only make a little bit more sense for them if they think Dort could get more than Sexton. Um, that's actually going to pick up the team option, excuse me, next year. Um, so that kind of defeats the purpose of that. Either way, I want to bring Dort back. Let's see if this team can make the playoffs or the play-in tournament. And his third year in the NBA, Wemby wins MVP. 27 points, 14 rebounds, five assists tonight, a steal and a half, three blocks, 52% from the field, 41% from three, and 88% from the line. We do get rookie of the year, though, in Cooper Flagg. 17.7 points, 8.1 rebounds, three and a half assists tonight. And shout out to Charles Lee and the Charlotte Hornets. 66 and 16 takes home coach of the year. We do get Cooper Flagg, obviously, on all rookie first teams since he was the rookie of the year. And we finished the season as a sixth seed. So for the first time, since the 2022 season, the last playoff run with Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell together, where they got bounced by the Dallas Mavericks in round number one, the Jazz are back in the playoffs. And we're going to be taking on definitely a beatable opponent in the New Orleans Pelicans. I think they're better than us on paper, but I could, I wouldn't be surprised if there was an upset that happened here with now Cooper Flagg in the mix. Once he starts hitting those threes and those free throws, it's game over. He could be an MVP candidate. And for the playoffs, I think we're still gonna, I think we're actually gonna remove Kyle Filipowski from the rotation. He was better in the second half of the year, but I think I'm gonna opt for Sensible being the last guy there. Kyler is gonna play a little bit less. I'd like to go Cody Williams a little bit more, but Hendricks is gonna play the backup five now. We're gonna go 35 to... I think 37 to Markkinen. We'll go 35 to Flag, and let's go 30 to Dort and 32 to Keontae George. So round one against the Pelicans, game number one. We ended up losing this one. We got blown out by 28 points. That hurts a little bit. Keontae George, five for 13, did have 10 assists. Kessler had a double-double, but we do take game number two when we split him in New Orleans. That is fine with me. 29 for Markkinen, double-doubles for Hendricks and Cooper Flag. Game number three, we end up losing this one though by 11 at home. Can we tie up the series and go 2-2? Yes, we can. All right, that is a huge win. 41 point fourth quarter. Kessler with 23 and 10. Okay, he's playing for a new contract. And here we go against the New Orleans Pelicans here back in New Orleans. This is game number five. This is the go up three games to two and we're, we're looking good right now. 80 to 76. Oh, we may have a close one here in the fourth. We are down by three, seven and a half to go. The defense is holding strong in this fourth quarter right now. Can we hold strong? All right, down by one, two and a half left. Can I maybe 
beat the allegations in the final 2K24 video. These Jazz jerseys, disgusting. I am not a fan of them whatsoever, man. What happened to the game I loved with these? I think they will be better going forward. So Cooper Flag is guarding Zion Williamson. Duke on Duke, hyped up number one prospect, hyped up number one prospect. Keontae George, I need you to stay in front of DeJounte. And okay, good defense on Yves Misi right there. That's what I'm talking about, Taylor. Kick it up to Cody Williams, the number 10th overall pick. Can somebody cut to the rim? Cody's gonna get stripped. Okay, we got the ball back. Cooper Flag roll to the rim, find him, Keontae. Oh, wow, I'm not gonna get that to go, but he gets the rebound. Out to Markkinen, who's tired for three. Larry, bang, what a rebound there by Cooper Flag, and we go up by two. Keontae Jordan just needs to get a little bit better on defense, but B-plus perimeter D is encouraging right now, as we got Flag guarding Ingram, so Duke on Duke once again. We got George guarding Murray. They're calling the ISO now. I think they're trying to get the ball to Zion. Can Markkinen hold his own on Zion? I should probably put Kessler on him because he is bodying him right now, and he's gonna get that to go. Yeah, I think for Zion, on, we will put uh, yeah, we're gonna go Kessler on him and then hopefully Markin will just guard Yid Misi. Cooper Flag and Markin work in the pick and roll, which is kind of filthy. And Flag's gonna get to the line. Cooper Flag's got 11, 8, and 5 in this game. His first career game 5 playoff game. Can we say that? I guess it is technically true. And is he gonna go 2 for 2 at the line? Yes, he is. I mean, they're gonna go back to Zion here in the post, but we'll see if the, uh, putting Walker Kessler on him was the right decision. He should be a little bit stronger, better post defender, and Zion's body mate. Okay, there we go. Get out of there. Great block there by Walker Kessler. That's what I'm talking about. We're up by two. Kick it up to Cooper Flag. Spin move inside. Right hand is good. Cooper Flag with a great finish puts us up by four. I don't love Kessler guarding Zion on the perimeter though. That could get ugly. Oh, Ingram gets a great look. Good close out there and he knocks it down. Huge shot by Brandon Ingram. Makes it a one point game. We're running a three point play for Lou Dort. I don't know how I feel about this. Oh man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Lou Dort's a great catch and shoot shooter. As marking and Woody, oh my god, it goes right to Zion. McCollum, I don't know why it took that. Blocked by Kessler, but it goes right to Zion. We're down by one. Pick and roll with Flag and Kessler. Flag's gonna go to the rim. Does not get fouled, but hits another tough layup. We're up by one, and we'll get the final shot. Unless they go for a very quick two for one, but they're gonna call a timeout here. Okay, Murray, um, they're not gonna go for the two for one. That would be tough. They throw the alley-oop to Zion, and he misses the dunk. But we, oh my god, we do get the rebound. Oh my god, it was a great play call. Zion gets a pretty good look at the alley you but misses it. I mean, great contest there. Marketing, can you hit both of these? And he misses the first. All right, that's not good. So if he hits this, we'll be up by two. He does hit the second one. Two point game, 21 seconds off. The Pelicans are out of timeouts. I assume they're gonna go to Zion in the post. That's what they've been trying to do all game. They throw the oop again. Kessler, though, terrible job there. We're all tied up. Cooper Flag gets a screen on Markin and find Kessler inside. Kessler with the right hand. Oh my God, we're going to overtime. Please don't suck in overtime. Please. All right, we score first. We're up by four right now. Oh man, it's going to get close. We're down. No, now we're tied. All right, they take the lead. 96 seconds left. We do have the ball. Markin and find Flag inside. Flag. Oh my God, just posted. His own Duke alumni, Zion Williamson. That was nasty from Cooper Flag. All right, that was insane. 17 rebounds for Kessler, but like I said, I don't love him trying to guard Zion on the perimeter. Obviously, Zion isn't much of a shooter. Kessler can rim protect just like that. Misses it, let's go. I think putting Kessler on him was the right idea. Flag trying to cross up Zion. Get him, oh, we got him jumping with the left hand and he's gonna miss it. Can I get, oh, damn it. Man, their whole offensive strategy is just trying to go to Zion inside and they get me in the air every freaking time. We're gonna come right back, I love this. Okay, just Cooper Flag gets to the rim, throw it down with ease. He's got 29 now. I think we jumped into the fourth quarter, he had like 17. Oh no, Murray gets a good look and he's gonna hit that. Down by two again. Keontae George to the rim, throws it down, tied up again. Their transition defense is horrible. Can we get a stop? It seems like we can in overtime here. Kessler guarding Zion. There we go. No way that goes in. Beautiful defense again by Walker Kessler on Zion Williamson. Cooper Flag, can he hit the go-ahead shot right here? Pull up. Cooper Flag, mid-range jumpers. No good. Kessler's right there with the putback. Yes! He's got 20 rebounds now. What a putback from Walker Kessler. Puts us up by two. But can we clamp up? Or are we going to double overtime? I don't love this. They're going to try to go to Zion. They're going to try to bully us and get to the rim. We're here with Kessler. We're here with Kessler. Misi, what are you doing? No shot. No shot. Misi scores over. Let's go. He's not scoring over Lowry. We take game five. And we are one game away from going to round number two for the first time in a few years. And we win game number six by six points at home. Walker Kessler has definitely earned himself a lot of money for us in the playoffs. 2.8 blocks. 
14 and 13 in round number one. Dort had 20 here. Marketing had 17. 11 assists for Keontae George. And we're going to be taking on the Denver Nuggets, who are the two seed in the West. They do have Karis LeVert on their team, starting at the shooting guard position. You have OKC and Dallas over there. You have Charlotte and Orlando and Detroit and Indiana. So you have a Southeast Division matchup and you have a Central Division matchup. So here we go. Game number one, Utah Denver. We do lose this one by 13 on the road. Game number two is going to go to the Denver Nuggets, 130, 127. Taylor Hendricks with 29 in this one. Marketing with 24. We are down two games to zero and we're down three games to zero. All right, we're not there yet. We're not able to beat these teams like Denver and we actually ended up getting swept. Damn, it was a close-ish series. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but yeah, we definitely could have performed a lot better. Keontae George shot 35% from the field. Sense of all shot 34%. And the Hornets, wow. Luka only averaged 19 points in the Western Conference Finals. And yeah, it's the Mavericks who beat the Nuggets in six. And the Mavericks beat the Thunder in six. And the Hornets there in the NBA Finals. So you do get to see Jordan Clarkson unless he got traded. And he did not. Jordan Clarkson is in the NBA Finals as well as Drew Eubanks. And if we look at the Nets, I want to see the numbers. Oh, they have Carl Anthony Towns now. What what happened there? I guess John Collins is now a member of the Minnesota Timberwolves. And that is the case. He started one game. Okay. I thought we were going to see like an insane stat line of John Collins in Brooklyn. That did not happen as the Mavericks and the Grant Williams Bowl, the P.J. Washington Bowl, win the NBA Finals in seven games, beating Charlotte. Luka gets MVP last year. Finals MVP this year. Clay retires on a very high note. And he gets his jersey retired by the Warriors, as he should. So I believe we do not own our first round pick this year. But we own Minnesota's first round pick and they were bad. Oh my god, okay. This team could be in a real good shape right now. We just landed the third overall pick in this draft. We also get the Clippers pick at 17. Now that is from the Sexton trade. Not the greatest pick in the world since the Clippers were good this year. And we will give OKC pick number 20 as well since it was top 10 protected. And we are definitely going to be bringing back Will Hardy on a nice contract extension for the head coach. Oh, we also have 14. Completely missed that as well from the Donovan Mitchell trade. We have 30 via Dallas. Uh, that is from the Jordan Clarkson trade and we have 33. I don't need to add that many rookies. I mean, I would love to get AJ Advance in this trip, but we'd have to make like a godfather offer to the Nets for number one. I mean, if I offered you three, 14, and 17, as well as, I don't think I can move Bryce Sensabaugh. I would include him in the trade. I will throw on Kyle Felpowski in this deal, which is a nice offer to the Nets for number one. And they are going to agree to that. So welcome to the team, AJ Dybansa. Yes, I'm going Dybansa over Cameron Boozer. And we just got Dybansa and Cooper Flagg in back-to-back -back draft classes, which is absurd. Like those are two potential generational prospects that we are getting. Cameron Boozer could be one as well. We got King Fleming at 30 and F.A. Ali at 33. We're gonna pick up the team options on Stoyakovich and Bryce Sensabaugh. So Rakovic could be featured in a trade, we'll see. I'm gonna pay Walker Kessler in free agency, so we really won't have that much money even though, yeah, I don't really have money anyway. And that's a pretty favorable offer for us in Walker Kessler. It's going to be four years, 60, or excuse me, $80 million. A little bit more, I think, than what Avita Zubac just got. So that could be in line for what he's going to make. So I think we could be active at the deadline. Uh, we could have made a trade right now, but I think I'm just going to bring back Walker Kessler. I got to see if I want to adjust this rotation, but I think I'm going to have, yeah, plenty of guys that I want to play. Uh, Hendricks is going to be the backup five next year as well. We may get Colin Murray Boyles into the rotation. And we have a lot of draft capital to use going forward. I'm not going to sign anybody on a mid-level exception right now as Kevin Durant did he he hasn't been signed yet Darren Fox ends up re-signing with Sacramento which I know some people think that maybe is not going to happen in the 2026 offseason point progression marketing is an 88 overall it says Keontae George 84 Cooper Flag 84 we do have to release two players so I'm going to release Johnny Juzang and I'm going to release F.A. Ali who was just our second round pick now nah, we'll actually do Ski or Svima Caillou and we got to start the number one overall pick right so yeah Devance is going to start in the backcourt with Keontae George that's going to move Voodoo to the bench him and Hendricks are going to come off it, but be the first two guys there. I think they're each going to get 22 minutes tonight. Let's go 20 to Cody Williams. We're going to go 15 to Isaiah Collier. Do I want to see what Bryce Sensabaugh can do this year? I think I want to see what Colin Murray Boyles can do. He's going to get like eight minutes tonight. And let's go 29 minutes to Kessler, George, and Abanza. Let's go 33 to Markinen and Flag. System proficiency is three and a half star balance. First game of the year on the road against the Nets and we lose. They do have Cameron Boozer, or is that Caden? That is Cameron Boozer, who they got at three anyway. So that really worked out for them. Um, and Markinen had 27 in this game. Okay. It's weird we started off with an L there. And we're here at the trade deadline. We have been on a very nice kind of streak here. Uh, we're not on a current winning streak, but we've been definitely playing better in the month of January here at the start of February. Our leading score is still Lowry Markkinen by 0.4 points. Then Cooper Flag is not far behind him. Followed by Keontae George, who's averaging eight assists. Rookie AJ DeBansa. And then there's Taylor Hendricks, Cody Williams, who is now shooting 
just 45% from three and 84% from the line. The dude is so efficient. It would be cool to see him as like a number one or two option, but we've had the luxury of getting some of these top draft picks. We are currently the two seed in the Western Conference, half a game behind Dallas. We have a better point differential though. We have the second best point differential in the NBA, only behind the Hornets who are on a like heater right now. They have Jalen Johnson, okay? And Brandon Miller's coming off the bench. I don't know if I wanna make a trade here at the deadline because I like what we got. So you know what? I think I'm just gonna let this team ride out till the end of the 2027 season. Luka wins his second MVP in this video. The advance does not get the rookie of the award. That goes to Cameron Boozer, which makes sense, right? Because he probably had more opportunities there in Brooklyn, Charles Lee is your coach of the year. Not Will Hardy, okay. We get AJ DeBance on our rookie first team and Colin Murray Boyles on our rookie second team. He wasn't great as the backup five spot. We did fall this year though to the two seed. Um, I thought we were gonna be the one seed. So I guess we didn't really fall because we were the two seed last time I showed you guys. We finished two games behind the Dallas Mavericks, but a better point differential which is something to note. But it does seem like, or it does seem like it's going to be the Hornets finals to lose because they were elite in the regular season and they ended up getting the one seed there and the playoffs going up against the New York Knicks in round number one. Wow, that's a very good eight seed for the Knicks now that they have Jimmy Butler. For the playoffs though, I'm intrigued on what I want to do here. Lou Dort was all right for us this year. I think he may go down to 20 minutes tonight. I think Murray's not going to play Murray Boyles. We're going to go Collier about 12 minutes a night. Hendricks back up five can get about 20 minutes. I want to play these guys a bunch. I want to go 33 to the backcourt. I'd like to go 35 to market and a flag. I think we're gonna go 37 to flag. But we have a brutal round one matchup against the Oklahoma City Thunder. They are the seventh seed, but they got Colin Sexton, who they brought back, and he was elite for them this season. They got Caruso, Aaron Wiggins. Okay, so they don't have Chet anymore. All right, not really sure about that. Game one does go to the Utah Jazz. We ended up winning by 17. Cooper flag with 28, 20, and six. Okay, Cooper. Game number two against the Thunder goes to the OKC Thunder. Okay, we ended up losing by 18. 16, 16, and five for Cooper flag. Uh, not great. All right, game number three, though. We do end up winning this one in blowout fashion. Max Christie scored the most points for the Thunder in that game. 30 for Marketing, 26 for Flag, 22 for Debanta, and 13 and 20 for Walker Kessler. Game four goes to the Jazz, 37 for Marketing. And can we beat them? Yeah, we do not blow a three to one lead. We take a round one victory over the Thunder. Marketing came to play. Keontae George definitely needs to be better in round number two, but I'll take that. We're taking on the Pelicans here. Murray, Jones, Ingram, Zion, we see the team we beat last year. They've added Jaden Ivey, which is pretty cool. They added Igor Demon, Kamal Malak as well as there. Game one goes to the Jazz. We ended up winning in overtime, 136-126. Flag with 24 and 17. Game number two goes to the Jazz. We take a 2 0 lead. They banta with 34 points. The 20 year old. Game number three goes to the Utah Jazz, 142 116. Marking in with 30, 26 and 10 for Walker Kessler. And game four, boom, 151 133. Flag with 32 and 18. Marking in with 24, 19 and 15 for Kessler, 18 and 12 for George. And we're going to advance to the conference finals. So one series better than we did last year, taking on the Dallas Mavericks here. Luke and Kyrie in that backcourt. Hugo, PJ Washington forward. You got Lively Gafford. They still have Jordan Clarkson. No longer have Drew Eubanks. You got the Hornet Tour 8-0 going up against the Bulls. They're the team to beat, man. We do win game number one by 38 points. Keontae George with 25 there. Game number two goes to the Dallas Mavericks. They win by seven. So we split them in Dallas. I'm okay with that. Game number three is going to go to the Dallas Mavericks by eight. That hurts because they can go up three to one right here. And that is not going to be the case. We end up winning by 23, 37 and 10 for marketing. Oh my God. 17 assists for Keontae George. But the Charlotte Hornets are 12 and 0 and they're already in the NBA Finals as we got to win two more games against Dallas. I'm nervous, man. Game five on the road. Oh man, it's looking good for us right now. We're up by 15 with four left in the third. And as long as they don't collapse here, which we're not going to, we take a three to two lead. Come on, here we go. Game number six, can we do it? Great first quarter. All right, wow, this is gonna be a blowout. Oh my God, not even close. We're gonna blow out the Dallas Mavericks. We win 156. We scored 156 in that game. Flag with a dominant Western Conference Finals MVP award. LaMelo Ball was great in the East. We won 156-120. Oh my God, Nibansa, killing it, man. But we're gonna take on the Hornets. They are unreal in the playoffs. This is insane. They are 12 and 0. They have a 20 point differential, but we do have a 16 as well. Uh, going up against Lamelo, Brandon Miller. Oh, they have Jadam. I, I forgot the Thunder didn't even have Jadam. I don't even think I mentioned that. Wow, that is unreal. And they still have Miles Bridges. And here we go. Hornets, Jazz, NBA Finals. Game one goes to Utah. We win by 13 on the road. Cooper flag 35 and 11 and eight. That's the first playoff loss for the Charlotte Hornets. That is insane. We get off to a great start in game number two. 
We blow it in the second quarter. Oh my God, we outscored them by 13 in the first. Get outscored by 17 in the second. We're down by five. This can get ugly. It, they're on a run right now. We're down by eight. Okay, we're tied. Going up 2-0 and winning both in Charlotte would be insane. Can we do it? We're down by six with 90 seconds left. Ah, oh, it's not gonna happen. We end up losing by seven. Markin had 31. Four, oh, three other guys had 21 points, but it was not enough. Game three in Utah. Can we do this? Can we take a two to one lead with an opportunity to go up three games to one? We have a phenomenal first half. But we're blowing it. Oh my God, what a choke job. What a choke job. We were up by 18 going into the second half and we blow it just like that. Can we stay strong, man? Up by four, up by one. This is scary. Oh my God. Oh my God, we gotta hop in. They do have the ball though. Cody Williams for some reason is in a point guard. Oh, how did I not get that steal? But that was risky. Lamelo three. Oh my God, he missed it. All right, that kind of rewarded me. I, I thought I should have got that steal. Wait, I didn't realize. Cody Williams is going up against his brother, Jalen Williams. I should have said that when I thought he was on the Thunder. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I don't know why he's working the pick and roll for me right now. Fine, Kessler inside. Who gets it to go? Up by four. A-plus Premier D for Cody Williams as well. Something to note, because I don't know if I want Keontae George Garden Lamelo. And yeah, easy dunk there for Clint Capella inside. Two-point game. We got AJ Devanta working off some screens. Gonna get a wide open look for three. And he misses it. All right, I guess that's karma for the Lamelo three. Okay, nobody's guarding Miles Bridges. Oh, God. Okay, he's gonna make that. Uh, both the defenders went to Lamelo in the corner. 26 and 9 for Cooper Flag in this one. He's trying to get around Miles Bridges. That's a bad look. But Walker Kessler. Oh, I thought he wasn't gonna get that. Out to Flag. Mm, I kind of wanted to take that. How did Miles Bridges not bite? Why am I going inside again? This is so stupid of me. Please. Oh, I'm an idiot. All right, I'm nervous. I'm er nervous. 20 seconds left, man. Like, LaMelo Ball can easily score over me. Unless I can get a steal inbound play. Like, that would be sweet. I don't know if I can get that. That's not going to happen. They're going to get the ball to LaMelo. Oh, God, he's so shifty. I'm going to have to help here with Walker Kessler. I'm not scared of Mark Williams shooting the ball. So, I could definitely play a little bit of drop here with Walker Kessler. That's fine. They're running. Oh, is that an illegal screen? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is insane. That's like the UConn-Iowa women's game from last year. That is insane. We are so lucky. We are so lucky. Get the ball to Cooper. Walker Kessler screen. Get to the rim, Cooper flag. And he's going to get to the line. That's exactly what I wanted. Three and a half seconds left. Just hit one. They do not have a single timeout. I got bailed out. Oh, my God. 2K is going to give me a little bit of luck. In boss, and my, what is probably going to be my final 2K24 video. And Cooper Flag misses the second. Okay. All right. No threes. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Marking it with the block. And we're going to do it. We're going to steal game three at home. 129-128 in a thriller. And we take game number three. Wow. That is insane. Flag at 27 in this one. A lot of guys in double figures. Huge game number four coming up. And we take the three to one lead. Let's freaking go. A 45 point fourth quarter gets it done. Five blocks for Walker Kessler. And can we end 2K24 off on a high note? Or are we gonna blow a three to one lead? We have a great first half. Okay, we're up by 19. We're up by 19. We're gonna, don't choke this. We win, we win. Let's freaking go, baby. We end the video off on a very good note. We pull off, I think what would be the upset. Wow, Keontae George, Keontae George, I'm getting ahead of myself. Four for 17 from the field. We still won. Great game here all around. Who gets finals MVP? It's Cooper Flag. 25 points, 10 rebounds, five and a half assists. We got lucky back in that 2025 draft lottery and it paid dividends here, winning the 2027 NBA Finals. So that is gonna be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, I would appreciate it if you drop a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed for all NBA 2K25 content. I'm really excited for the game to come out and hopefully make some new content when that drops. I love you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.